Hi guys, it's Pision8 here. Let's continue our series on this 3D cauldron. After finishing with ZBrush, it's now time to do retopology. Even if it's not fun, it's absolutely crucial for our 3D game props. As you can see here, I'm using Topogon, but it's starting to be a really old software, and I hope the Topogon 3 will be released soon, probably in the next few weeks. After having retopologized my bone here, I'm gonna start using 3D coat instead of Topogon. I wanted to try another software in order to do this painful task, and let's say that I was really surprised by how 3D coat was effective. So I think uh, until the next release of Topogon 3, I will keep working with 3D code. To be fairly honest, I did try before this video to use 3D code in order to redo my work of the bone, and the result was actually better with 3D code. And that's why I will do my next retopo only with this new software. For this last video, I wished to take my time in order to explain everything in full length, so this video will be a little bit longer. Because I know that sometimes some speed modeling are indeed very hard to follow because they go way too fast. Ok, let's start with 3D code now. For our first retopo, Let's begin with the rocks. What I first has to mention is that this task is actually very hard. Such discipline requires a lot of work, knowledge and experience to master. So it's still a work in progress for me. I am not only exploring the software, I'm also in the process of trial and errors. I need to accept that I'm not perfect and still need to work a lot on my 3D skills. Now I will let you watch a little bit more of the video without talking, letting you appreciate the music and I will of course comment when needed. For the rocks, I try to stay as big as possible for the polygon because they are representing big flat shapes. Though it is not that important nowadays to be too focused on having an extremely low number of polys. It's better to have something closer to our shape even if it means more polygons. In 2020, video games are less obsessive with that than before thanks to improvement of graphic cards and 3D engines. Of course, that is still the case for smartphone games. The next generation of console 
is now at our doorstep and we will be able to play with our brand new PS5 or Xbox Series X probably for the end of the year. The number of polygons, even though it is still important, it's not the most costly in terms of graphic resources. Here, I'm drawing a pattern that I have just learned. It's a shape base of Tripoli, and when you put it four times in a spherical formation, it will make a beautiful round shape. Here, I'm doing those shape again, and I will be sure to make it a whole lot of time in this video. As you can see, I'm relaxing my topology, that's because it's important to be sure to avoid deformations and also to keep the same density on the mesh. It will help in order to stick to square polygons of the same size instead of rectangles of various sizes. Retopo is finally finished, now it's time to put it all together in 3ds Max. Here I can see some mistakes, so I'm fixing them, and now it's time to UV. For simple shapes, I can use the UV unwrap of 3ds Max, but for more complex one, I will be using Rhizome UV. 
This software is actually quite new in my workflow, so it's the same as 3D code. I'm still learning. Even though unwrapping your UV is not very fun, is actually a very important step because if it's done correctly, you will be able to use the most texture space per pixel. Like that, a simple 2K texture will be enough. The most satisfying part is when you will be doing your baking with Substance Painter and everything will bake nicely. We are now done with UV unwrapping. In Max, I need to export my project with the proper file name and folders. To back correctly in Substance Painter, you have to main your object by ending the low poly one with underscore low and the high poly one with underscore high. Like for example, handle underscore low and handle underscore high. Those have to match. It is very important. After importing my object in Substance, it's now time to bake. I cut the rendering baking part because it takes too much time on my computer and it is not very important just to see a progress bar charging. Now that I'm happy about my early stylized texture, I'm going to create in 3ds Max the planes for the fire and the smoke. I will add in Substance Painter an emissive channel and of course an opacity channel in order to have transparency for the smoke and the fire. So let's analyze what we just saw in the painting process. First, I made my bake in order to retrieve the details of my high poly on my low poly. It will also allow me to use some smart material 
thanks to the different map created. Like the position map for example, the software can now apply my stylized smart material. I will have only to adjust my material for the different texture and colors. Here I'm setting up Marmoset in order to have a good preview. I like to have both software on. It allows me to see my textures and immediately see how they will appear on a real environment. My computer is also old, so it takes a lot of resources to do that. So it's finally the end guys, I hope you liked the video, please put a thumbs up, you know what to do if you have questions, and don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell. Thank you for watching, bye.